Excellency Hiroshi Yoshida-san, my colleague Minister Jitin Prasad ji, President Nascom Devjani ji, Secretary Maiti Shri Krishnan ji, Additional Secretary Abhishek ji, and Mr. Srinivas Narayanan ji from OpenAI, all the delegates from around the world, friends from industry and friends from media, all the colleagues, I welcome you all to this mid-year summit of the GPA. Last one year has been momentous in the journey of AI. With the potential of AI clearly visible, both in the general world, as in, in the terms of consumption of content world, to the industrial world, and to many other social sectors, there is a huge enthusiasm about how AI would actually change the way we live, the way we conduct business, the way our society is structured. Simultaneously, over the last one year, there is a huge realization too about the dangers, the risks, and the threats to our social institutions. As Minister Jitin Prasad ji noted, in the recent general elections, we have seen how big a threat disinformation misinformation and fake news can be. And that threat gets multiplied manifold by the power of AI. And this is not something which only we are experiencing. The entire world has experienced the same and globally every society, every government is feeling exactly the same threat from the emergence of new risks based on AI. And the societies are responding in very methodical, very thought-through ways. In the recent summit of G7, Hiroshima process was announced May 2023. Very significant part of the Hiroshima process was that all the countries have to tackle this threat together. As we look at the potential of AI, we also need to collectively figure out a way what limits we need to pose on the technology. How this can be properly integrated with our social and democratic institutions. In that summit, the focus was on creating legally binding frameworks which are applicable across the world. Similar step has been taken in Europe, where Europe has passed EU AI Act in March 2024. Again, the focus is on defining what the risks are, identifying them into, placing them into buckets, less harmful, more harmful, very harmful, something which is not acceptable at all. And then working with the industry to make sure that those harms are contained. In the US, an executive order has been passed on AI on similar lines where the thought process is once again on creating a safe, secure, and trustworthy environment where AI basically works in harmony with the social needs. The United Nations has also set up a high-level advisory board on AI. Last year, in November 2023, at Bletchley Park, a Bletchley Declaration was signed. I'm giving these examples because these examples are very relevant for all of us whether in India, whether in Europe, whether in Japan, whether in US, everywhere we are facing the same challenges and the global south is today looking for a universal support, a universal thought process, at least some common basic principles on which the world has to respond to the potentials on the one hand and the challenges on the other hand. We in India have basically understood that yes, for many of the problems that we face, many of the challenges, economic as well as social challenges that we face, AI can be a very big tool to solve many of the problems. Simultaneously, we need to contain the risks which AI brings. We also believe that the solution has to come through a global thought process. It cannot be done in isolation by any country. That's why we decided to hold this media summit 
so that the experience of the last one year can be discussed in detail and we can come up with a proper consensus on what should be the way forward. I am thankful to all the delegates who have come from across the world from about 50 countries at a very short notice and I thank you for all the participation that you will be doing. The participations here will lay the foundation for the next steps that we take in the regulation as well as the potential of AI. In our approach towards utilizing the potential of AI, the thought process has been to democratize technology. Our Prime Minister's vision for technology has always been consistently towards democratizing technology and I, by that we mean that technology should be accessible to everybody. We all know that technology is becoming and especially modern technology is becoming very expensive and in many geographies the tendency is that it gets limited in the hands of a few whether it is called big tech, whether it's some cases government controlling everything, the approach that our Prime Minister has always adopted is that technology should be accessible to everybody. So the digital public infrastructure is a classic case where no single payment provider, no single service provider has monopoly over the service. The government invests in the platform and everybody basically becomes a part of that. Same approach we are going to adopt in AI also. Here the approach will be, the government will be investing in creating a public platform where compute power is available, high quality data sets are available, a common set of protocols is available a common set of framework, technical as well as legal framework is available. Then the startups, the entrepreneurs, the academicians, the people who are working on different applications for a variety of sectors like agriculture, medicine, healthcare, education. People work on those solutions can then use this common platform for accelerating their efforts. It's a very unique approach. And this approach is consistent with the last 10 years of Digital India. This is very much in line with what we are doing in the healthcare sector, in logistics sector, in payment sector, in financial services sector. Everywhere we are creating a public platform where the startups, entrepreneurs, researchers, academia, everybody joins to utilize the power of that platform. We will be investing in an AI compute infrastructure of 10,000 or more GPUs and again it will be an approach of public-private partnership so that the, put the efficiencies of uh, industry can be harnessed for this bigger cause. We'll be creating AI innovation center, we'll focus on getting good data sets, high quality data sets which can add more value to the efforts of researchers, startups. We'll have an application development initiative where applications which are relevant to our social problems, to our economic problems, can be developed, can be focused on. We'll also put huge emphasis on skill development. As you are aware, we have uh, set up a course curriculum in about 104 universities for semiconductors, for 5G and 6G development, we have tied up with about 100 universities. We have tied up with the uh, universities for railway and logistics uh, sector, very specialized courses, very focused courses, which basically help develop the depth which is required in today's world. Similar approach will be there in case of AI also. And once again, we'll be partnering with the industry as in the case of railway, as in the case of telecom, we'll be partnering with the industry for defining what the course curriculum should be. We'll also focus on accelerating the deep tech, deep tech and AI financing because we know that uh, venture capital will come at a point where 
the returns start being visible. The phase before that is most vulnerable. So how do we support the deep tech startups during that vulnerable phase will be part of our mission. End of the day, the whole package, the whole India AI mission, which was approved by the cabinet a couple of months back, the team is working on the setting the foundation, setting up all the seven pillars, and maybe in a couple of months or maybe two and a half, three months, we will be launching this mission. The approach will, as I said, will be of democratizing technology. Friends, the parliament is in session and uh, both me and Minister Prasad will have to be in the parliament. I thank you all for uh, being present at uh, short notice, early morning, and I hope the sessions will set the tone for AI regulation, for using the AI potential, and my special thanks to Minister uh, Yoshida-san for the Tokyo GPA Center. As uh, Minister Yoshida-san said, GPA is a great institution which has built the foundations for global thought process around AI. And with OECD, UN, EU, everybody working on it, it's time that we all combine our efforts. We all think collaboratively. We have the Global South on board. And all of us work together to make sure that the humanity harnesses the potential while containing the risks. Thank you very much and wish you all the best.